Hello and welcome to another Digital Motorsports video. My name is Ronan and this is another video in the frequently asked questions from our customers and sim community. So today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be looking at the SimCube um, bases and the software involved around them. Today what I have with me is I have a SimCube Ultimate and what we're going to do is we're going to update the firmware, we're going to go through the true drive software that's available from SimiCube, how to find it, how to install it, how to mess with the profiles, and also how to connect a wireless wheel such as a Cube Controls wheel. So with the uh, SimiCube range, you have the Sport, the Pro, the Ultimate, and you can, as you can see, you can find these all on digitalmotorsports.com. The difference between the, these wheels, obviously there's a, a varying factor of Newton meters that these can provide, but the, the difference I wanted to explain here is in powering them on. So to power on an Ultimate, you have this button down here, and this is your power button, and you have to make sure that your emergency stop is unpressed. With the Pro and the Sport, they are just a, a button on the back, and obviously you want to have your emergency stop button un, uh, unpressed as well. So now we have our SimiCube powered on, and um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go and install the TrueDrive software from SimiCube. So if we go to SimiCube's main page here, which is simuq.be, is the actual website. Go to support, scroll down to the section that says drivers and in brackets true drive. We want to download true drive software. This redirects you to a, um, a Granite device wiki page. So don't be put off by this in any way. You want to pick the newest version which is normally the top link on the page one thing you have to note here is you need to download and install Microsoft's Visual Studio 2019 redistributable package um, in order for um, the true drive software to run so I'm actually gonna go ahead and do that now so there's a link on this page just clicking it here so just go agree install and it's actually asking me to restart my PC, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So that Visual Studio package is now done, so what we're gonna do is we're going to install the TrueDrive software, so just click the download link here, and it'll take a couple of seconds to download. So we wanna go ahead and unzip this, so I'm just gonna go unzip it to, unzip all. Cool, so now we have it unzipped, so we're just gonna open this up here. At the moment, um, there is an early access to TrueDrive Paddock, which is gonna give you some more settings um, with uh, like online profiles where basically people have made profiles to suit specific games and specific cars. Um, but what we're gonna look at here is we're just gonna look at the classic, okay? Just asking, would you like to send uh, anonymous data to SimiCube? I'm just gonna say, yeah, sure. So here we go. We are now within the SimiCube True Drive. I'm just gonna click yes to the agreement here, and okay. So straight away, the software has picked up that my SimiCube is plugged in, and that it is due a firmware upgrade. So I would recommend that you do go ahead with this firmware upgrade. So we're just gonna click next here. It's putting it in a bootloader mode. It's searching to see if it can see the SimiCube in firmware upgrade mode. It's found it, so I'm clicking next, saying next to update the firmware, yes. And this will take a couple of seconds. So that's done now, so it's saying it's verifying the update. And update complete. So now it's gonna close the true drive so we're just gonna click finish here. And we're going to open, and I've just got a confirmation tone that the uh, SimiCube is restarted. Into TrueDrive Classic again. And we now have the operating mode is operational. It's on a default profile. The e-stop is released. So if I actually press the e-stop now, it'll say that the e-stop is pressed. So basically you will, it'll kill the wheel um, if this isn't, um, if 
this is pressed. So I'm just gonna unlock it again. Cool. Um, high torque mode is enabled. So high torque mode will, uh, like by default, it runs in like a, lo a low torque mode. So if you wanna enable high torque mode, um, it will um, put the, the, the newton meter, the force uh, feedback up on the wheel uh, sig significantly. Um, you can obviously change this within the profiles. In itself here, we've got the, the wheel position. So it's now saying, even though I'm looking at the actual physical um, device itself and the wheel is straight, it's saying that it's off here. So we need to actually reset the center. So we're gonna go reset center. And I'm gonna say set permanent wheel center. This will take a couple of seconds and then it will reset the center for me. There we go. So if we go to the next tab here, this is where you can add a wireless device. So basically, um, if you have a Simicube device, um, you can come in here and it'll basically scan for a Formula Pro wireless, for example, and it would show up its name, its MAC address, uh, its signal strength, its connection, and how much battery is left in that, in that wheel. So you can actually then select from a list and go select current device. And by default, then you can see automatic connection mode is set to connect a previously connected wheel. Okay, so if you had uh, one wheel you were using all the time that was wirelessly connected, it'll obviously try to uh, establish a connection every time um, it boots. Within the next tab down here, this is basically your profiles. So say for example, uh, I'm a big fan of iRacing. So um, I want to put a, a default iRacing profile onto my wheel to start out, okay? So we're gonna go add, scroll down, and you can see we have either an iRacing simple mode or advanced mode. We're gonna go simple mode for the meantime, and click OK. And underneath here, it's basically gonna show you your overall strength, your steering range, your smoothness, and your damping. So basically, this is a profile that is set up specifically in, a, in simple terms for iRacing. So I'm gonna click Save Settings to Simicube, and that's now done. So if you look at the active profile here, now we have iRacing Simple is the active profile. So the next uh, tab here is it's kind of like a general settings tab. And one of the things that uh, people get a bit frustrated at with the Simicube sometimes is the hands-off detection sensitivity. So, um, this is more of a uh, safety thing. So basically you can see here it controls how sensitively the device goes into safe torque mode automatically. So safe torque mode is if basically you have a massive crash, say you have a high torque mode on and you hit a wall and the wheel jumps off, it detects you've let go of the wheel and it puts it into safe torque mode. Um, you can change the sensitivity on this. I find high is quite intrusive. So I'll normally move it to somewhere like medium. Um, or sometimes low, but again, personal preference. And then the last tab here, we have just uh, kind of general information about your particular model. So obviously you have a Simicube uh, 2 Ultimates Revision 1. It tells me the TrueDrive software and the Simicube 2 firmware software that I'm running. Um, if something goes wrong and you need to start everything from scratch, you can go everything uh, start everything from scratch and it basically defaults the entire wheel. And just a couple of other settings here that I'm not, that I'm not really gonna change. Um, but yeah, that's your Simicube 2 TrueDrive software. If you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments or you can contact me directly uh, via email, uh, racing at digitalmotorsports.com. Thanks very much and follow for more videos to come. Are you itching to get racing? Whether it's circuit racing, drifting, rallying, or even karting, here at digitalmotorsports.com, we run some of the best online leagues in the world. To get involved, visit our website at digitalmotorsports.com and enroll for our next event.